Hello, this is Dr. Mark Mirabali. I'm here at Holy Trinity Abbey in Ireland with Anne, a lay apostle. We are going to be going over volume six and the messages of Heaven Speaks to Families. We will begin with the June 7, 2004 message from Mary, an unknown saint, and then ask Anne for her comments. This then is the June 7, 2004 message. With gracious permission from the Lord Jesus Christ, I speak today to all mothers. You are living in a time when mothers are no longer honored for the important role they play in the protection and development of society. Mothers, you are the cornerstone of the home, and the home is the place where a person's soul begins his or her critical formation. The enemy labors relentlessly to persuade mothers that they should leave the home and abandon the development of their children to others. Mothers, another person cannot love your child the way you love your child. Another person, even though they may be a good person, is not intimately interested in the emotional and spiritual development of your child. Many of you must work to support your family. Jesus understands that and will help you, as will I. But you must scrutinize your situation fearlessly and be certain you are leaving your children so that you can earn the money to procure necessities. It will not be acceptable to say you left the rearing of your children to others so that you could earn money that was not needed. I tell you this because our Lord wishes families to be together. Jesus, who knows exactly what each soul requires for proper formation, is asking that mothers remain home with their children whenever possible. I am unknown in your world, yet I am a beloved saint here in heaven. On earth, I cared for my children in my home. There were many times when I found the work tedious. I can assure you that I often longed to be working outside of my home because I had always thought I would work professionally. The days may seem tedious, dear mothers, but when stitched together, they make the most beautiful tapestry that illustrates the growth of a little soul. I earned a very high place in heaven <clears throat> simply by caring for my husband and children. If you have more than one child, then you are teaching Christ-like behavior all day long as you show the children how to behave towards each other. If this beautiful formation occurs in the home, you will send your children out knowing that you have helped the kingdom to release Christ followers into the troubled world. You may not understand the gravity of your role, but if you meditate on it, you will see that if all mothers were to abandon their responsibilities, we would see even greater darkness. Jesus will not allow this, of course. I want to speak to those mothers who have lost children through sickness or tragedy. Dearest mother, whose heart is broken, you will see your child again. And when you do, you will see that your child has been joyful and cared for in your brief separation. Do not grieve if you can help it, but spread joy to those who also grieve. Ask me and I will help you to do this because I know that it seems an impossible thing. All is well in heaven. Have no fear that your child is not with God. We must all cooperate with heaven during this time, so prayerfully consider what it is that Jesus needs from you. Powerful message, Anne, to mm -hmm. mothers. Your comments? Um, <clears throat> it's very strong to hear that the role of mothers, uh, that they play this important role in the protection and development of society. So what this saint is saying to us is that if mothers abandon their roles as mothers, society, all of society is jeopardized. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is something to consider, isn't it? And they, she talks about critical formation. Critical, the word critical means it is necessary. It has to be there. If it's not there, very bad things will happen. So this is another thing. Now there's great, um, I, I think it's beautiful uh, the way she says that another person cannot really be intimately interested 
in the emotional well-being of the child. Is that's very true? Yeah, it, it seems, Anne, that that this unknown saint mm -hmm. who says that she has received a very high place in heaven mm -hmm. for quote nothing more than loving her husband and serving her husband and children. Yeah, that she's really emphasizing that. Uh, no one can replace you as a mother right. in your home. And she also spoke of sacrifice, it being a sacrifice for her. She, she said, I always thought I would work professionally, and I couldn't, or I didn't. I chose not to. So it, it was a sacrifice. Sacrifice is called for. Now, it, of course, she says that many have to um, leave homes to earn money for families. And, and you know, this is a common experience today. Mm -hmm. um, but they, say, they ask mothers to scrutinize their situation fearlessly and make certain that they are leaving home to work for needs and not wants. Right. It seems to be an underscoring of necessity <clears throat> rather than um, just for more uh, financial help. It's interesting that in the messages of St. Joseph, he'll say the same thing to fathers. Mm -hmm. so saying, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your presence has to be in the home mm -hmm. and uh, you have to examine why you're away and your, your first responsibility is not as a provider, mm -hmm. but you have to be present with the family. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a common call to, to both to the marriage. mothers and fathers yeah. to be home and to put the family first. Yes. Um, there's beautiful words here with the, how she says that anyone who's had little babies, you know, who, who those early years, I think the word tedious is a good descriptive <laughs> word for the diaper years, you know, the mm -hmm. night things, all those things. But she says, uh, when they're stitched together, they make the most beautiful tapestry that illustrates the growth of a little soul. And that is lovely. Mm -hmm. um, the one uh, suggestion I have for mothers is that we, every mother, sometimes fathers see the children as a group, the children, mm -hmm. provide for all of them. The mothers see them individually and very uniquely and understand that it's not one size fits all in terms of food, discipline, anything. And I think it's helpful for mothers to spend time in their prayer, a little bit of time in their daily prayer, praying specifically to Jesus with each, for each child and asking the Lord, what is it specifically you need me to do with this child? Mm -hmm. It reminds me of a great uh, philosopher, St. Edith Stein, who said, you know, men have a gift of the universal, where women have the gift of the particular. Yes. And uh, as one father said, you know, our goal is to get the mass on time, mm -hmm. but my wife's goal is, is each child well prepared? Yes. Uh, are they well dressed? And that's, that's a mother's gift, yes. is the gift of the particular. Yeah. And, and it seems like that's highlighted here, too, that, mm -hmm. that no one is going to give to your children what a mother can give to the child. And again, going back to the the call to be home and to be present. And together. Uh, they say we, we, families need to be together. Now, anyone who has teenagers knows that that is a challenge. Uh, so there has to be form in the family. There has to be rhythm. You know, certain mm -hmm. things that are not movable, be it the dinner hour or uh, Sundays or you know, everyone has their own way of doing that, but there has to be some time where the whole family is together as a family, you know, family rosary, those are all components of it, but I think that they want, families need to be together, mm -hmm. even if they're fighting like cats and dogs, <laughs> right, right. because they will. Right, so presence of the mother in the home, mm -hmm. motherly focus on individual children mm -hmm. and structure, which leads to family sanctification. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anne. Mm -hmm.